Everyone, um, so my name is Lee Bridgman and I am the Head of Quality Improvement and the Get It Right First Time Programme here at Medway Foundation Trust. Um, also with me presenting this afternoon is Sophie Buck, who is an NHS Graduate Management Trainee currently on placement with us here. Um, but she is working as our Marketing Manager for our Medway Innovation Institute. So first of all, I'd like to start off with who we are. So. Just for those of you who don't know, Medway is located in uh, the north of Kent, and we're about 40 minutes out of um, London by train, um, which you'll drive in. Um, Medway Foundation Trust is a medium-sized hospital. Um, it's got just over 4,000 members of staff, and as primarily we serve the Medway and Swale population, which is a, an area next to Medway. Um, we're, we're very keen that going forward, we're using innovation for the good of our patients, um, and what our institute does is combine the skills from across the trust from about 4,000 plus staff base um, to allow us to develop ideas uh, and to take them through um, an appropriate QI approach. So how, how did we get to the point of developing the idea for an innovation institute? So first of all, back in October 2019, we undertook a bit of um, staff engagement work. And what we found here was that we were recognising that there was some concerns from staff um, there was limited engagement with the current um, transformation program that was in place um, and that actually you know, there was gaps in, in the way that they could interact following that we had a cqc inspection and then the report that came out in april 2020 highlighted a few things for us which included silo working around the trust innovation being stifled across the trust and a lack of a uniform approach for improvements so what these combined did was give the trust a clear set of recommendations and also give us a few clues towards the barriers that we needed to overcome to, to actually break down and move forward as a, as a trust. Um, the strategy therefore that came out of that was the idea for a virtual institute um, and which would be able to develop QI projects and adopt a single defined QI uh, methodology. So creating a brand for our partners, the idea for the Midway Innovation Institute was born. Um, and so for us, empowering staff is now a key fundamental in the ethos of which the Institute is based. Um, and for us, learning and celebrating success are also key drivers for the Institute and, and plans are for, for us to develop the Institute further in the, in the coming times. Um, as I say, it was, it was born out of this uh, CQC inspection and staff engagement. However, of course, um, COVID came along. And in the midst of this um, devastating pandemic, you know, we, we did find a bit of a silver lining in that actually what this did was give us permission to develop ideas and for staff to actually develop ideas within their own areas within the trust. It also gave them permission to speak up um, and to bring those ideas forward. And actually within that climate, giving them the permission to fail. Now, obviously, we take the learning from those failures and say, it's OK, but, but what can we do different next time? What we found as well, due to the COVID pandemic, silos started coming together so um, teams that had never interacted with others before were, were suddenly working together you no know, people that were working in finance were suddenly out delivering ppe people that had no idea around um, how the trust interacted with partners outside of the four walls of the hospital started doing so um, and what was great is that actually we were given the corporate and clinical leadership support and backing to move the institute forward and so on the 2nd of July this year, the Institute was launched. Now, we had the value or the principle that you know, we're accelerating quality improvement for the trust. Now for us, that comes with a set of values. Um, just going to quickly talk you through these. So first of all, it's our prioritising patient care, ensuring that all our patient care is to a high standard. Um, having an impact. Now, it doesn't matter what impact it has, whether it's small, whether it's large, but actually having an impact using the same methodology and, and showing measurable results. You know, it, it's just important to say that there is some sort of impact and that we can show the evidence for that. Staying connected. So we believe that bringing staff together and letting them communicate and, and actually bringing all those good ideas together to one forum and to have one place to, to work as that accelerator to, to work them through and with the support and the tools, that that's a real key fo factor for us in the Institute. Um, maintaining excellence, we, we 
we want the high standards for our patients. You know, there's, there's nothing more important to us than this, that actually at all times we're, we're maintaining that, that absolute highest level. And obviously a key to it for us is to think strategically. All the ideas that are coming through to the Institute now, we're making sure we're mapping those back against our trust improvement plan and ensuring that actually we're aligning across the governance um, processes as well. So we aim to profile, celebrate and share good ideas and good practice. We want to kickstart and incubate ideas. We want, we want to stimulate staff. We want to bring together different contributors. We want to help people provide and scan and gather information. You know, there's no point reinventing the wheel. You know, favorite phrase is still with pride. That there's no what's already out there. That let's build on what's come before us. And as an institute, we are um, the driver to help deliver some of these changes. You know, we, we've, we are a dedicated resource, but we can help people. Um, gain resources for their areas, whether that be through funding or support, whatever they need. Um, and you know, this is our day-to-day -day work now, um, but also having the knowledge of working within our existing governance framework and, and driving through that. Um, overall, what we're saying here is we're building capability into our staff, into our workforce, but also into our um, organisation as a whole. So this, again, just kind of reflecting on our values that what we're, we're doing here is our ethos is what we want to be and what we don't want to be. You know, we, we want to be uh, always putting patients first. We want to be thinking big um, and we absolutely believe that anything is possible. It doesn't matter how many barriers there appears to be at the time, but actually anything can be achieved if you've got the right people and the minds to it. What we don't want to be seen as is some is a, a group of people that can make quick fixes. You know, we're here to support, we're here to coach, we're not here to do the doing. And so, you know, we're not a quick fix and we're not here for people that want someone else to come in and do it for them. You know, these are, we're, we're working with people who are so passionate about the areas they work in, but what they need is, is a little bit of help understanding how QI methodology can help them deliver their projects. And, you know, we don't want to maintain the status quo. We don't want to just get by anymore. We don't want to ju just, just do what we need to do. You know, this is about making world-class standards going forward. So what is it that the Institute actually does? So we support our staff in getting qualified in QI. Now, there's different streams to what we're doing. Um, and we're tapping into other resources as well, like the Improvement Fundamentals online courses, which are a very good set of um, online webinars with some videos in there, which are offered through the NHSI. Um, and then also QSAR virtual training, which we're going to be um, enrolling our first cohort in November. And also we have internal programs such as the QI coaches, um, which is training up member staff to coach others within their departments to, to lead on projects. Um, and also MediLead, which is a, a project for our junior doctors. And then we, we have support from our partners within the, the library and knowledge service um, as well. And um, other various training courses. We have some funding available um, that we're able to tap into. So as an in, uh, institute, we have a pot of money where for each project, people can put a bid in. And it's a very straightforward application process. It's a very, very lean document, uh, up to £10,000 per project. And what we've agreed with the trust is any efficiency savings which are made at this time are reinvested into the institute so that we can keep offering this come next year. And then on top of this, we've also got access. So Medway Hospital Charity have um, small grant funding of up to £2,000, which again, our coaches can help people understand how that they could um, access this money. And then there's also the CEO scholarship, which has just been awarded to one of our consultants recently. So what we really can do is help people get going. You know, we support them through the QI coaching, um, through giving them a forum to celebrate ideas, mission to go, well, actually, I was thinking about this the other day, or here's the place to come and tell us about it. Here's the place to then, you know, discuss it, map it out, process maps, driver diagrams, all of that. We've got experts in how to deliver that. Uh, and that's what we're here to do is support using those essential tools. Um, and we, we can have different people from different areas of the trust. You know, we've got people try, trained up in our HR department, we've got people trained up in our finance department, we've got clinicians trained up. So it really does bring a multidisciplinary approach to our QI training. Um, and what we're doing is tracking projects through with weekly touch point meetings. And we, we try to run for about a 12 week um, cycle um, through the methodology we've, we've adopted, which is the model for improvement. Again, 
steel and required. You know, this is what we've adopted. We, we very much know that this works, that it's simple and people understand it. So when we're talking to those who maybe don't understand QI quite as well, we are saying to them, okay, so what are the aims of your project? How are we going to measure this? And what are the changes you're going to do? And then take them through a PDSA cycle. And we might put that two or three times in that 12 week period. And at the end of that, we'll evaluate it with them and then they can see how they can embed it into their department. Or it could be that they say, well, actually this hasn't worked. And again, failure is okay. Um, what we're very keen to do going forward is celebrating our successes. So we're, we're looking to, to work with our partners and again, across the library service to start publishing more and making sure that we're, we're publicizing both internally and externally some of the great things that are going on here at Medway. Uh, and now to talk to you more about those is Sophie. Um, and she's going to tell you what we've done in our first 111 days. Thank you, Lee. Can, I hope everyone can hear me. Um, so yeah, as Lee says, I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview of some of the key achievements, um, a couple of our project spotlights, and some other cool things that we're doing at the Institute. Um, so as I'm sure Lee's alluded to, there's been a huge number of achievements in the past 111 days since the launch. Um, can I next slide, please. Thank you. Um, we, so we, we've recently launched our roadshow events whereby members of our core management team um, vis visit each department around the hospital and inc included some of those harder to reach staff groups um, to tell them about the Institute and how they can get involved and what it means for them. We, we want everyone to feel like they know what the Institute is and how, it, and how we can support them with their ideas. So going out physically throughout the hospital to deliver the message has resulted in a huge number of project ideas being submitted via our website, um, which cover a range of categories such as patient experience, staff satisfaction, technology and pathway redesign, which has been absolutely brilliant. We've also had a huge peak in the interest in quality improvement training courses, and it's growing each day. Um, these courses range from the QI fundamentals that Lee spoke about all the way up to the QI board sessions that we'll be running for our board members. It's great to see that staff are keen to get involved with QI and understand how they can incorporate it into their day to day roles. Um, so we've had excellent support on that. In addition, we've completed a number of in-house coaching courses that Lee mentioned. Um, these are run by our Executive Director of Transformation, Jack Tabner, and also our lead QI coach, Steve Houlihan. Um, and these courses have been really well received by all of those involved in clinical and non-clinical. Um, and finally, we, we've had a number of um, successful funding applications put forward. Um, when, we, when we launched the Institute, we secured a ring fence sum of money to support project ideas. Um, and we thought, you know, on the first day, people would be coming and asking for thousands of pounds. But what's been really nice to see is people realise they don't just need to throw money behind an idea. They just need a bit of support and pointing in the right direction, which is what the role of the QI coaches do. So um, one of our first success stories I'm going to speak about um, is uh, some of the new technologies that were implemented as a result of COVID-19 by the Institute. So um, we, this project was um, about the implementation of current health monitors, which you'll see on the screen. Um, and the importance of regularly monitoring patients is, can, can't be overstated, um, but the practicality of actually observing them can often be time consuming and very difficult to manage. But as a result of COVID-19, our trust needed us um, to find a way to ensure that we could keep an eye on these deteriorating patients, but also reducing the contact between patients and staff. So our team proposed the use of the current health monitors to resolve some of these issues. Um, some of the benefits that they put forward included early detection of deterioration, deteriorating patients, which meant earlier referral to critical care, uh, also a reduction in COVID-19 transmission, reduction in the number of home visits that were required. Um, so yeah, there were loads and loads of great benefits put forward. Uh, research was carried out by with a neighbouring trust who were using the monitors. And although the original plan was to use them in a similar way, which was for the home visit, it soon became apparent that they could be utilised within the hospital, um, particularly on the acute respiratory wards. However, the device hadn't originally been created, created for this purpose. Um, so MFT became one of the first hospitals to use them in this way, which is a massive success. There was confidence that the monitors would be a success before the implementation, as the SMART team had done a lot of research into telemedicine for quite some time, and there were examples of how it had been used successfully before, both locally and abroad. And the, the team were right, right to feel confident about this, as the project has been a huge achievement, and the use of the monitors within the hospital has worked really, really well, both for patients and for staff. 
Um, there's a full write-up case study on the work, um, which you can read on our website, which is www.medwayinnovationinstitute.com. Um, you can see some of our other blog posts, case studies, and all of that. Um, so the next project spotlight that we want to focus on is around emergency planning and the development of our instant control center. So uh, emergency planning, uh, with emergency planning, the idea is to look at the threats on the horizon um, that could impact the hospital and have the plans and the processes and the right people in place to manage the incident when it occurs, um, whilst also keeping the day-to-day -day patient care as much as possible. Um, so back in February, when COVID started to pick up, we looked at the flu plan um, and with the guidance that was coming out centrally, we could tell that the one plan fits all approach just wasn't going to work in this situation. So our EPRR team, they set up a command structure, which included daily reporting, just as you would expect from any emergency instance. But a few times as a trust, we had to PDSA and pivot away from this normal command and control and set up something that was that was more suited to the incident that we were dealing with. So different tiers of command were put in place, the strategic, the tactical, the operational, while specialist groups were created to address key areas of the response. These included staff welfare, infrastructure and ethics, and they were all bespoke for the COVID event. There was also a need to make sure our staff were keeping calm and that people were being communicated with to ensure that no one felt left in the dark. Um, we achieved this by simply creating an internal COVID bulletin, which went out to staff daily and staff fed back that this was really welcomed. The EPRR team also noticed some additional innovative opportunities as a result of COVID-19. For instance, our on-site charity shop, the Med Medway League of Friends, and the restaurant stopped essential and hard to find items like pasta um, and baked beans during the early days of the pandemic, which also, whilst also switching to contact the uh, contactless payments. So the Medway Innovation Institute have now funded a brand new state-of-the-art instant control centre so that we can manage whatever comes next in terms of COVID and winter. This is absolutely fantastic news for the EPRR within Medway and for the hospital so that we can run an incident from somewhere that's bespoke and isn't a space that's just to make do. Having had input from the design uh, on the design from ground up and the modelling of the design with Blue Light Partners um, and also the help of one of our QI coaches, the aim was to create an environment that instills confidence, not only in those that have to respond, but also for our key partners that may have to come onto site, such as Kent Police or Kent Fire and Rescue. So this has been a massive achievement um, and we will be producing a case study again on this next week once we've had some nice photos taken. Um, so yeah, next. Uh, a couple of additional features that we, we've brought to Medway with the Institute. Um, these include our big rooms and big conversations. Um, they're slightly different. Uh, I don't know if, if anyone's doing them elsewhere, but um, our, big rooms are an, uh, our big room events are a chance to get a multidisciplinary team into a room to discuss solutions to some of the biggest strategic challenges faced by the Trust. We've been delighted to facilitate two forums focusing on reducing pressure, reducing harm from pressure ulcers and improving nutritional care for our patients. These half-day sessions build on the work to date and a chance to showcase some of the key learnings by hearing the progress from the teams on their work. We still have a number of big rooms that we're wanting to host in the future, but the current situation has meant we've had to put a halt on them, um, which is a shame, but we, we have lots more planned. In addition, we've also hosted four big conversation speaker series events. These are where we invite external subject matter experts or people just with an interest in a particular topic to come and deliver a free webinar open to absolutely everyone discussing a subject of their choice. These have been a huge success both internally and externally and give colleagues an opportunity to learn about something new and take part in an interesting discussion or ask meaningful just, uh, questions and just start a conversation within the organisation. So last week, we were lucky enough to be joined by a fantastic panel to discuss learning disabilities and autism and explore ideas about how we can support our colleagues to embrace differences. And on next up on Tuesday, the 3rd of November, we'll be joined by Annie Coleridge and Dr. Katie Baker in our episode of why we need to talk about menopause. Um, there's loads more information on our website and you can register your interest there, which is again www.medwayinnovationinstitute.com. And all previous episodes are available on our YouTube channel if you just type in Medway Innovation Institute. So finally, some take home messages. I think, you know, we've set up the Medway Innovation Institute at 
uh, Medway Foundation Trust to as our quality improvement accelerator. Um, and if you want to find out more, please visit our website, medwayinnovationinstitute.com, send us an email or follow us on Twitter at MFT Innovation. Thank you.